Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Like in the previous video where I talked about the DGCA navigation exam, in this one I'll be talking about the DGCA meteorology exam. So I'll share the most important questions, topics and again some tips and tricks for you to pass this DGCA exam. Meteorology is not a very tough subject and I think you can study MET on your own as well. There is no need to take classes or anything. The syllabus is pretty straightforward and there is not a lot of topics as well, like we see in navigation or technical general. But since the topics are easy, DGCA tries to play around with the questions and you can find some questions to be tricky. But if you know the concepts well, you'll be all good. If you're giving this exam as a part of your license conversion and have studied MET in some other country, this exam will be quite a cakewalk for you. The syllabus for meteorology remains the same everywhere, obviously because the weather phenomena is same. It's just the regional climatology that is different. So you guys will only be new to the Indian climatology section of the exam and will only have to focus on this part. And again for this video, keep a notepad handy and try noting down all the topics and questions I talk about in this video. Now to start, you should know the percentage by volume and by mass of nitrogen, oxygen and other gases in the atmosphere. You should know the ratio of nitrogen and oxygen with respect to weight and volume. You should know the percentage of water vapour in the atmosphere, the importance of water vapour and the characteristics of the various layers of the atmosphere are also important. There are questions on what happens to the temperature, pressure, density and humidity with an increase in altitude. So make sure you read about it. These all are very basic stuff and you should expect straightforward questions on these. Then they can ask you about the various heights of the tropopause and you should know that it's significant because you'll have jet streams, maximum cloud tops and all this stuff because of the tropopause. Then you should also know about the rare type of cloud that is found in the stratosphere. So that cloud is the nacreous cloud. Next obviously you'll have questions on the International Standard Atmosphere ISA. I have a video on this so do watch it before the exam. Now to be honest with you guys, if you prepare this first chapter properly, you'll be able to answer a lot of questions in the exam because DGCA focuses a lot on this basic stuff. So make sure you get all these easy questions right and even you know that it's not difficult at all. It's just the basic about meteorology. It's just the basic about the different layers of the earth or about the percentage of gases and all this basic stuff. Next comes the questions on pressure, density and the various altimeter subscale settings. You can be asked that what is the pressure lapse rate observed at for example 20,000 feet or at 40,000 feet. So do read about it. You should know the pressure in hectopascals at various heights like it is 700 hectopascals at 10,000 feet or it is 300 hectopascals at 30,000 feet. So there are these straightforward questions on these values as well. Then as I told you in the navigation video as well, there will be a lot of questions on QNH, QNE, QFE etc. So please practice questions and numericals on this. If you watch the video I have made on altimetry, you'll get an idea about all these terms and the kind of questions you can expect. Then you should know about the pressure lapse rate in cold and warm air. You should know about the terms anticyclones and cyclones. You should know the weather observed in both of these. Also you will be asked definitions and weather conditions in a ridge, trough and a call. Definitions of isobars and isellobars are also important. And lastly from multimetry read about the temperature and pressure errors of an altimeter. What happens when you're flying from an area of high temperature to an area of low temperature or from an area of low pressure to an area of high pressure and vice versa. You should also know the reason behind this error. You can be asked direct definitions of density, density altitude, 
and the effects of density on an aircraft's performance. So you should know what is the effect of low density on the aircraft's performance or how does water vapor affect the density of air. And there will definitely be these questions on what happens to the density if static pressure is increased or if the temperature is decreased and all this stuff. So the idea is that if you know the basic concept behind density and the factors on which it depends, you'll be able to answer all these questions very, very easily. So just make sure you have your concepts very strong and you'll be able to answer any question on it. Moving ahead, you should know what is conduction, convection, condensation and how all these affect the temperature of a place. You should know about how the earth is heated by the sun or how is the atmosphere heated. Then there's a very hot question on the height of the Stevenson screen. So they can ask you the height at which a Stevenson screen is placed. Okay, perfect. Now talking about the latent heat concept. So you can be asked that when ice changes to water, will it release or absorb latent heat? Or when water changes to ice or anything? So again, you should know what is the idea behind latent heat and what is condensation, sublimation, evaporation and all this stuff. You should read about how humidity is measured, what is relative humidity and absolute humidity, what is dew point, if the dew point temperature changes with anything or not, or what is the humidity mixing ratio. You should know about what happens to the relative humidity with temperature and altitude. Okay, all these are very very hot questions asked by DGCA. Next you'll definitely get questions on the stability of air. You should know the relationships between DLR, SLR and ELR in different conditions of stability, instability and conditional stability. Now moving further, you should know how clouds are formed by the different methods like frontal lifting, orographic lifting or due to low pressure and stuff. You should know about the various cloud types as well. A lot of people are asking me to make a video on clouds but I think there is not a lot to teach in clouds. It's just the different characteristics which you can read about in the book. But I'll try and make a video sometime on this as well. So from clouds, you will be given some characteristics and you'll have to guess the type of cloud. So if you know the properties, characteristics of all the clouds, you will very easily answer any question on this. So just make sure you know how each cloud type looks like and what are the properties. What is the type of precipitation? What is the type of icing? What is the height that it is formed and all this stuff. You should also know about the visual phenomena seen in some clouds. You should know that a cirrostratus cloud shows a halo, which is seen due to refraction. You should know that corona is seen in autostratus cloud, which is due to diffraction. You should know the difference between a large and a small halo. You should know about the different theories behind precipitation, the ice crystal theory, the giant nucleus theory and all that stuff. Now next comes the thunderstorms, the various trigger actions and the stages of formation of a thunderstorm. Again, I've made a video on thunderstorms explaining everything. So do watch that before the exam and you'll be comfortable with thunderstorms. Next, if we talk about fronts, you should know the weather before a front, at a front and after a front. So again, there's a video on frontal systems in which I've explained the weather conditions before, at and after a front in the form of three tables. So if you understand those tables, because I won't say you learn those tables, if you just understand the concept behind it, you'll be able to answer any question from frontal systems. Okay, cool. Now the next topic is winds, where you can be asked these definitions of gust, gale, squall and lull as I've discussed in the winds video. Knowledge about the different winds is also very very important as you can get straight questions on those. Watch the videos on winds and jet streams for the thorough understanding of this topic because I've explained a lot of stuff in these videos which can be asked as very very straightforward questions. So make sure you study winds thoroughly. You should also read about mountain waves and the conditions necessary for formation of these waves. 
So in the exam, there are questions asking about what is the wind speed required for mountain waves for small mountains or for large mountains. So there are these wind speed values which you need to know. Then there can also be questions on stability of air around the mountain when mountain waves are observed and also the cloud type that is observed around a mountain wave. Now from visibility, read about the range of mist, haze and fog. Make sure you know the diameter and visibility of drizzle and rain. The definitions of oblique visibility and meteorological visibility, the height from which the runway visual range is measured, and the various types of fogs, the reason for their formation and how it's dispersed. So these are some important topics from visibility. Now if I move to icing, you should know where all you can expect large supercooled water droplets and small supercooled water droplets. You should know where inside a cloud is clear ice and rime ice observed. Obviously, you should have complete knowledge about all these types of icing. What is clear ice, what is rime ice, what is hoar frost and all this. You should know about how icing affects an aircraft's performance or which is the most dangerous type of icing or which is the type of icing that can be formed on ground. All these are important questions. Just read about carburetor icing as well. There's this question that asks the outside air temperature range in which carb icing is observed. Okay, so read about it. Now, if I talk about climatology in the tropical systems, you should be well aware of each and everything that is happening in climatology. If you know the reason behind everything, if you know why is all this happening, why do we get monsoon, what happens in the winter season and all this, Believe me, you will be able to answer each and every question. You'll find all these questions very, very easy if you know the basic stuff. They'll ask you very direct questions like when are the Northwesters observed? Or what is the Western disturbance? Or what is the tropical easterly jet stream? It's just very, very basic stuff. So just make sure you watch and understand the Indian climatology videos well. Because if you understand these videos, you'll be able to understand the concept and you'll be able to answer any question because you'll know why something is happening or you'll have the reason behind everything. So a lot of people want me to make a video on tropical systems but if you watch the Indian climatology videos properly you'll see that I have covered all the important topics from tropical systems as well. I've talked about the ITCZ the tropical easterly jet stream, the equatorial trough, the monsoon depression and also the tropical cyclones in various Indian climatology videos. So if you watch those 4-5 videos properly, you won't have any problem in the exam. Additional to this, read about what is surge and shear lines because they can ask you this as well. So there is no need to take stress about tropical systems if you have watched the 4-5 videos I have posted on Indian climatology because those videos cover all the important stuff from tropical systems as well. Now if I talk about general circulation, just read about the cell model. Read about what is the Hadley cell or the feral cell, what are the trade winds, what are the doldrums, what are horse latitudes and also about what are the roaring 50s because these are the important questions that can be asked. Now from meteorological services, make sure you know what is a METAR or a SPECI, TAF, TREND, AREP, PIREP, SIGMET or a surface weather chart. You should know how to read these, what is the validity and when are these issued. There will be definitely a question on decoding a METAR and a TAF. So they'll give you a METAR and they'll ask you what is the type of precipitation or what will be the visibility at so and so time. They can ask you about what is the cloud cover right now or what will be the cloud base at this time and all this basic stuff. So if you know how to read a METAR, how to read a TAF or if you know what is a SPECI, when is it issued and all this stuff this question is very easy for you. So to pass this exam, make sure you know the theory well. Make sure you know the reason behind each and everything that you study. 
बिकॉज नथिंग इज इलॉजिकल और विदाउट अ रीजन इन मिट्रियोलॉजी एंड इफ यू नो द रीजन बिहाइंड समथिंग देर इज नो वे यू विल गेट दैट क्वेश्चन रॉन्ग मेक श्योर यू प्रैक्टिस ऑल द बैक क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम ग्रुप कैप्टन आई सी जोशीज बुक एंड इफ यू हैव टाइम गो थ्रू द बैक क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम ऑक्सवर्ड्स मिट्रियोलॉजी बुक एज वेल एंड बिलीव मी दिस विल बी मोर देन सफिशियंट फॉर द एग्जाम do not stress about it too much it's going to be an easy exam if you know everything you'll be able to complete this in not more than 20 minutes and again i would say that do not just keep sitting there to read your answers if you're well prepared you'll pass don't change your answers unnecessarily now for the people who are preparing for the atpl exam you can get questions about heights of different jet streams and basic questions on converting lapse rate units the height of a cb cloud or about safe distance to fly around clouds and questions asking about where is the possibility of finding wind shear around a thunderstorm so just this basic stuff now this was pretty much all for this video i hope this helps you in some way or the other best of luck for your exams and thanks for watching